Welcome to Unicorn Recap. Today I am going to review an action thriller film, Escape Plan, released in 2013. Spoilers ahead, let's dive in. Ray watches the guards while burning a page from his Bible. He's using the ashes to draw on the wall. At that moment, his cellmate informs him that a prisoner is planning to attack Ray in the yard. Next day, Ray attacks first and quickly overpowers two other prisoners, fighting like a pro and severely injuring them in the process. The guards immediately capture Ray. They take him to solitary confinement. He is allowed to keep his Bible. As days pass, Ray studies the guards' routines, like their smoking breaks and the use of a keypad lock. Ray also starts making little balls with toilet paper and water. He hides that ball inside the toilet paper tube. When they bring him lunch, he extracts a transparent plastic sheet from the milk carton. One afternoon, Ray asks a guard for the time, then he starts counting for himself. A mysterious woman leaves a car in the prison's parking lot. She walks away from it. She uses a control to make it explode. All the guards run to evacuate the prisoners, only to discover that Ray has escaped. The fire truck rushes to take care of the fire. Ray is on it dressed as a fireman. He escaped in a vehicle driven by his friends Hush and Abigail, who triggered the explosion. They drop Ray at a store by the road and give him a coin. Ray uses to call a certain number and just say the word, Showtime. Soon, Ray is surrounded by policemen. They arrested him again. He isn't bothered because his manager, Lester, is already taking care of it. Lester explains that he and Ray work for a company hired by the government to break out of prisons and expose the flaws in their security systems. Ray has already escaped from 14 prisons and explains how he did this time. He studied the layout and the routines of the guard. He made some enemies on purpose to be sent to solitary confinement. He noticed the prison is understaffed. He was left alone whenever the guards left to smoke. He wrote a letter for his team, hiding the chosen day to escape in code. He also put the plastic sheet on the keypad to get the guards' fingerprints and retrieved it by hiding it in his Bible. The sheet gave him the four numbers. He just had to guess the sequence. He used the paper ball on the door's food hatch to stop it from locking properly. When the guards weren't around, he put his hand out to test combinations until it worked. While the guards were out smoking, Ray came out, rewound the security cameras a few hours to cover his absence. He used the vents to reach the fire apartment right before Abigail started the fire. Now the warden is annoyed, but lets Ray go. Sometime later in Los Angeles, Ray helps Hush with some computer problems before meeting CIA representative Jessica. She has a job offer. She explains that the CIA has created a new prison whose location can't be shared with Ray or his team. If he manages to escape from it, they'll pay five million instead of the usual 2.5. Ray agrees to do it even if Abigail and Hush are wary. Jessica provides Ray with a cover ID, an explosives terrorist named Portos. His contact in the prison will be Warden Marsh, and Ray is given an evacuation code. Abigail and Hush are still worried about the lack of information they have on this prison and convince Ray to wear a tracking device. They inject the device into his arm. Then Ray goes to stand on the street to be picked up. Suddenly, he gets teased down and thrown into the back of a van. While the vehicle takes off, the masked men scan Ray's body and find the tracker. They immediately take it out. Abigail's and Hush's computer instantly loses Ray's signal. Ray is put to sleep with an injection. Sometime later, Ray wakes up inside a helicopter while still in a groggy state. He watches a guard beats another inmate up before stabbing him and throwing him out of the helicopter. Then Drake notices Ray is awake and orders his men to put him to sleep again. When Ray wakes up again, he's finally in prison. It's nothing like he's ever seen before. All cells are plexiglass cubes hanging in the air, and guards wear black masks to hide their identities. There's also a huge sphere with a camera that moves around to keep an eye on the prisoners. Ray is taken to see the warden. He is a man called Hobbs. Ray become worried because this isn't the warden they told him about. Ray gives out his evacuation code. Hobbs doesn't know what he means and doesn't care. Later, everyone is taken out of their cells for a break. Ray watches how the guards don't hesitate to brutally beat up anyone who doesn't obey them. The prisoners' jumpsuits have a special code on them. They get scanned through every door. At that moment, Hobbs says the name of Ray's fake identity through the speakers. After watching another man getting beat up, Ray is approached by some thugs who want to take advantage of the new guy. Ray immediately breaks the leader's hand and punches him down. Before the others can react, prisoner Emil tells them to back away. Emil tries to befriend Ray and explains he used to work for Mannheim, a powerful man who stole from the rich to give to the poor. Mannheim is a wanted man, but Emil refuses to tell Hobbes anything. However, Ray doesn't care about Emil's story. Meanwhile, Hobbes scolds Drake for killing that inmate since it was a capture for a client. Many people here aren't criminals, 
and they just got on someone's bad side. Ray continues to study the layout of the prison and the behavior of the inmates. He notices the Muslim prisoners that still pray even if they can't see the sunset. Emil notices Ray watches everything and points out he's the guy to go for favors. Ray explains he needs to get into the isolation area. Eager to help, Emil immediately punches him and makes him fall. Ray punches back. Emil just laughs. Ray starts hitting him harder, and an actual fight ensues until the guards come to drag Ray and Emil to the isolation area. The isolation rooms are tiny metal boxes with blinding lights on the side, which torture the prisoners with unbearable heat. Ray does his best to withstand the suffering and inspects the box for anything he can use to escape. Dr. Kyrie comes to check on Ray's health and Ray tries to get information from him. Kiri doesn't say anything. On his way out, Kiri is approached by Drake, who demands to know what they talked about. He lies, which tells Ray he may have a conscience after all. Emil and Ray are sent back to the general area. Ray starts making a drawing on the table while telling Emil he'll need a piece of metal. Emil asks to speak to Hobbes and pretends he'll finally confess Mannheim's location. He asks for some paper to draw a map. He makes a very rude drawing instead. Hobbes gets furious and told his men to hold Emil down. After enduring lots of pain, Emil uses the chance to steal a metal drain cover. Later in the common area, Emil gives the cover to Ray, who tells him his real identity and how he got there. Ray guesses this prison has been built underground and there's something under the box's hatch that should allow him to escape. The place is subterranean. There's moisture in the air that has caused the steel rivets to rust. Ray will apply toothpaste and heat with the metal cover to make the rivets snap. First, they need to be sent to the isolation again. Emil approaches Javed and starts a fight by insulting his mother. Javed's Muslim group comes in his defense. After hiding some bread in his clothes, Ray joins the fight. They only get to exchange a few hits before the guards arrive. They subdue everyone with tasers. Once everyone is back in the heat boxes, Ray starts working on the rivets while hiding what he's doing with his own body. It's very hard to work because of the heat. Emil hides it by yelling about his pain. Eventually, Ray manages to remove all the rivets and covers the security camera with the bread. He knocks on the wall to give Emil a signal. At that moment, Emil begins to cry and yell like crazy. He gets the guard's attention on him. Ray uses the chance to finally open the hatch. He begins to go down a ladder until he lands on a corridor. The door is locked, so he decides to use some pipes to start climbing up. He accidentally tear off some electrical cables. He also break few pipes in the process. Ray just keeps going until he finds another hatch. He opens it to find the shocking truth. This prison is inside an oil tanker ship in the middle of the ocean. Suddenly, he notices some guards nearby, so he quickly hides and goes back into the hatch to climb down. Leaking water pushes him away and he ends up falling, but the corridor is getting flooded so he lands safely in the water. As the boxes slowly get flooded too, an alarm starts ringing. The guards rush to take the prisoners out of isolation. Ray swims as fast as he can, and after lots of effort to go against the water pressure on the stairs, he returns to his box right before the guards come for him. Abigail and Hush inform Lester that Jessica's check has been bounced. Lester tells them that he's already talked to her and everything is going well. After the water is taken care of, Hobbs finds the rivets in Ray's box and starts getting suspicious. He makes a call that reveals Lester has been in contact with him all along. Lester tells Hobbs about Ray's real identity. Lester asks him to keep Ray forever. He asks Hobbs for information on Mannheim because banks all over the world want his head. Ray is trying to sleep but a guard keeps tapping on his wall to keep him awake. The guard beats him up in the morning as a wake-up call. This starts happening every day. Ray's body begins getting so weak that he can barely move. Emil gives him as many pep talks as possible to keep up Ray's spirit. Ray ends up sharing his story. He used to be a prosecutor. A criminal he sent to jail escaped and killed Ray's family for revenge. The drawing Ray is making is the last memory of his kid. Since then, he makes sure criminals won't escape ever again. For the next few days, Ray studies the guards' routine to find any useful habits. He starts to assign names to them by differencing them through body shapes. To start making a plan, he first needs to know where they are. There were no landmarks when he went out. One day during lunch, Emil discreetly stabs Ray. He's taken to Kiri's office for stitches. Ray suddenly pretends that he's in great pain and falls. He used the chance to steal a few things from a tray. He also reminds Kiri of his oath, but the doctor still ignores his questions. When Ray returns to the common area, Emil gives him a pen and a prisoner's glasses. Hiding his hands under the table, Ray builds a sextant, which should help them determine where they're based on the stars. 
Drake and Hobbs notice weird movements on the security camera, so Hobbs asks to see Ray. Fortunately, he hides the tool before he's dragged away to a new section. Hobbs tells him he knows his identity and admits he used his book to design this facility. Then Ray is sent back to the common area and tells Emil about the new plan. Later, while Ray is giving a bunch of fake information to Hobbs, Emil approaches Javed and gives him the sextant. He promised to help him escape too if he helps them. Afterward, Javed contacts Hobbs and tells him the others are planning to escape. Hobbs agrees to buy his information by letting him pray in open air as his beliefs demand. This is all part of the plan. That night in his new cell, Javed uses the sextant to get the coordinates of their location. The next day over lunch, Javed gives his notes to Ray. He puts it together with things like the weather he felt when he was out, the date mentioned by a newbie, and the direction the water goes down in the toilet. Ray concludes that they're near the coast of Morocco. Ray swallows some clothing powder to get sick. He's sent to Kyrie's office. He tells the doctor to go to Hobbs' office and read a passage on a particular page in a certain book. After some hesitation, Kiri checks the book and finds the Hippocratic Oath. The next day, Kiri asks the guards to bring Ray to his office for a checkup. He wonders how Kiri knew the exact page, and Ray explains he wrote it, which confirms his identity. He finally convinces Kiri to help. Afterward, Ray gives Hobbs a fake location to find Mannheim. They have 24 hours to escape before Hobbs catches on. As part of the plan, Javed also meets with Hobbs and tells him about the incoming escape. Hobbs rushes to check the cameras and notices Ray tapping on his cell wall. Recognizing Morse code, they discover a message about a plan to riot in Block C during transfer. Meanwhile, Kiri is sending a coded email to request help. After most of the guards are sent to Block C, Javed starts a riot in the common area. It soon becomes absolute chaos. Hobbs tries to make his men change areas quickly. Ray, Emil, and Javed rush to knock down the few guards around them and steal their weapons. The incoming guards start subduing the prisoners. They throw a gas bomb, allowing the trio to sneak away unnoticed. Ray explains that they only have 11 minutes to meet with the rescuers, who are approaching in a helicopter. They rush upstairs and shoot a door open. Ray finds a security camera, since the cameras are connected. Ray messes with this one to disable them all. At that moment, Hobbs activates lockdown protocol. When the trio is about to get out, they find the exit is locked. The trio starts wandering around looking for another exit. Soon they're surrounded by guards who open fire. They immediately shoot back and quickly bring down all the men. Javed gets wounded in the process. More guards are coming. Emil and Ray drag Javed as they run to hide behind another door. Ray realizes they were found by a motion detector, so he disables it. Hobbs taunts him through the speakers. Ray decides he must find the engine room to shut down the power. He gives his gun to Javed and tells him and Emil to take the stairs. After Ray leaves, Javed admits he won't make it. He takes Emil's gun too and asks him to go on without him. Soon after Emil leaves, Javed is surrounded by guards. Bravely makes sure to shoot all of them down. He's brought down by a hidden shooter. When Hobbs finds him, Javed says his last words to his before he's killed. Meanwhile, Drake goes after Ray in the engine room. Ray jumps around and runs to dodge Drake's bullets. He manages to surprise him from behind. In the struggle, Drake loses his gun, takes out a knife, and a hand-to-hand -hand fight ensues. After exchanging a few hits, Drake chokes Ray for a few seconds. He start to kick him down. Ray grabs his leg to overpower him and get the fighting going again. Both men steal a few tools to use as weapons. After exchanging a few hits, Ray pushes Drake down the stairs and kills him. Ray rushes to the control panel. He knocks out the technician and turns off the ship's generators. All lights go out in the ship and the doors open allowing Emil to come out. At that moment, a helicopter opens fire on the ship before landing on the deck. Few men come out to start a gunfight with the guards. Emil sneaks around while avoiding bullets and makes it to the chopper. One of the soldiers has been shot down. The pilot wants to take off, but Emil asks him to wait for Ray. He takes over a machine gun to join the fight. He kills dozens of guards in seconds. In the engine room, Hobbs is looking for Ray, who is hiding inside a water tank. At that moment, the guards turn the ship's systems back on. Emil has no choice but to leave with his guys in the helicopter. Ray's tank starts filling with water, but before he gets drowned, the tank automatically flushes itself and expels Ray into the ocean. He immediately swims to the surface. Emil throws a ladder down for him. He climbs up. Hobbs and the guards open fire on them. 
Emil gives Ray a gun, and they both fire back until Emil gets wounded in the shoulder. Hobbs keeps missing his moving target. Ray uses the chance to shoot a bunch of oil tanks, causing a big explosion that kills Hobbs. The helicopter drops the duo on the Moroccan beach, where they're picked up by Jessica. It turns out that Emil is Mannheim, and Jessica is his daughter. She hired Ray to get her dad out of prison. She also confirms that Lester is doing dirty and betrayed her too. Sometime later, Ray reunites with Abigail, who has acquired information on Lester. He had been offered to be CEO of the prison program if Ray was unable to get out. Now Lester is trying to get away, but Hush is waiting for him in his car and quickly knocks him out. When Lester wakes up, he discovers his car is inside a container on top of a ship in the middle of the ocean. 